Welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. This is our match preview for Lille v Aston Villa in the quarterfinal of the Europa Conference League. Aston Villa are 2-1 up, but it's going to be... I feel like it's going to be a tough game, but, you know, it's Europe. We're in their backyard, so we'll get on to Lille in a second. Justin, how are you? You must be having a good week. Excellent week, yes. Can't get much better <laughs> than uh, coming off the back of that win, can it? Oh, mate, it's just absolutely incredible. Like to watch the highlights and the goal, and to break the you know, this is the beauty of uh, of creating content is that you get to like live with it for a bit, you know, you get to break it down. I did the debrief, and so good looking at the, the key elements of the game, and just absolutely fantastic. So we're going to kick it off then. I've got three topics I want to talk about before we get into Lille. So my first one is a question for you at home. Where do we rank Ollie Watkins in Premier League level strikers? Now, I'm ranking him very, very highly. And I'm ranking him highly not only because of his goals and his goal involvements, but I think when you look at these type of things, you've got to look at where we are in the table. And I think that's telling that we've got these goal involvements. We've got the goals that he scored, 19 goals. You know, we've got 29 goal involvements now for the whole season. For me, I think he's going down as one of the greatest Premier League strikers that Aston Villa have produced. It's bold, but I think it's I think we're getting there. What are your thoughts, Justin? As far as Aston Villa's go, yeah, he's, he's right up there, isn't he? Um, off, off, you know, off the top of my head, Dwight York, absolutely incredible. Love Dean Saunders, love Darren Atkinson. I love Dion Dublin. I love Ben Teke. You know, we have had some really good players and really good strikers at Villa. But I think his consistency since we got promoted back to the Premier League has been really, really good. And all you could ask of any footballer is they improve season in, season out. And that's what he's done. He's every single season, he's improved. And I think manager-wise, barring, we won't talk about the one manager, but barring sort of him, um, everybody's got the best out of him, haven't they? I think Dean Smith was very good for him. Had him, obviously, at Brentford. Uh, he came into Villa. He, he settled very quickly. Quickly became a fan favourite. Uh, and I think that the one or two little things to his game that frustrated us, which was his slightly his finishing, um, and, and that has improved as well. And I think that's massive credit to, to Unai Emery. Now I don't, I can't really think off the top of my head one player that that he has sort of coached that hasn't improved, and, and there's none more so starker than, than than Ollie Watkins. You know, he's gone from being eighth, ninth in the Premier League goal scoring charts now to up in the top two or three and, and with Salah coming towards the end and maybe question marks over the next couple of seasons that, that Harlem might actually leave and get to say someone like Real Madrid. I don't really see many people that can touch him in the next few seasons. You know, he's, he's at the peak of his career age-wise, 28, and, and he's just getting better and better and better. So, provided we keep the nucleus of this team together, um, and he doesn't get any major injuries, then I don't. I just can't, I can't see this form dropping. I can't. I really can't. He's, he's becoming a really, really good all-round striker, regardless of what Troy Deeney says. He's an absolute plank. Um, yeah, brilliant. One of the best, and potentially, if he continues the way it's going, probably will end up being our greatest Premier League striker. I want him to get this record. I really want Don't him to get this. Don't we I really, all. I really want him to just get this record and and just get it done and get it done and, and dust it. <laughs> that's what yeah. I mean. Get it done. But yeah. no, I, you know, I echo what you're saying. Um, I, I think the beauty of Watkins is what I really like about him as well. Is the, well, there's a lot of things, but a couple of the things that have just popped in my head. Number one, he's he's just a he's just a role model. You, you know, you, you don't see him in the press. You don't see him anywhere. He's he just he's just a an a, just a likable person. You know, he's a, yeah. a real family guy, and he's just hard working as well. And and I think that not the word endeavor, but I think when when you can see somebody who's like grafting and working hard and and wants to improve. 
I, I, I drag myself to those types of people a little bit more because I can see the effort that he's put in, like pre-season. Remember when, you know, he was doing work with that striker coach and, yeah. you know, you saw the clips and you're like, that's not a Villa coach. He's got that striker coaching on his own back. That coach is nothing to do with Villa. And, and, and I, I really liked that. And it's just his hard work in nature. And now you, I can start to... not. I think sometimes you, you can have an ability. But I think sometimes you've, you've got to believe in that ability. And I think what I'm finding with, with Watkins now is that he's talking like an elite striker. And, and I think that's key. I think there's something switched in his mind that's like... I believe I'm a proper like I'm a proper striker, and I think that's really important as well. So uh, those are a couple of things that I'd like to say about Watkins. But he, he's absolutely unbelievable, and he was unplayable at the weekend. And I just really wanted to touch on him a little bit, really, because I think I don't think he get, I still don't think he gets the credit he deserves. No, I think he's um, he's approaching that level now where people have to take notice of him. A bit like, you know, after that performance weekend, they have to take notice of him again. Now, everyone just thought he was going to drop off, but we've had a bit of a wobble. But, you know, that performance has smashed us straight back into the to right front of centre of everybody's thick thinking now of, of how big a club we are. And I think it's important that Ollie Watkins has got that desire and that belief. But I think what's the most important thing for him at Villa this season has been that he's got a manager that believes in him, a manager that can see the levels that he can go to and you know the numbers he's producing are something that we haven't seen at Villa you know for a very long time you know he's gonna he's gonna go past 30 30 goals in all competitions this season which is a ridiculous number you know that's Harry Kane type numbers and it's something that as a squad for everything to come together and be a successful team there's certain positions every position is important I get that but there's certain positions within the 11 that you have to have the best players in and striker is one of them because goals is the hardest thing to come by. And I think the other end of the pitch, we couldn't have two better bookends to our team, could we? You know, we proved that on Sunday, on Sunday, didn't we? Martinez making that amazing save with his foot and then Ollie Watkins finishing off the game right at the end with a, with a sublime finish, probably the best finish I've seen this season. And, and everyone in between is just fantastic as well. But those two either end, have been very, very special this season. Very special. Yeah, and everybody talks about the spine of a team. The spine of the team is so important. And like you've just said, yeah. at the one end, we've got the well, the second top goal scorer in the Premier League. And at the other end, we've got the world's best goalkeeper. So if Not you bad, can get the if you can get the middle bit working, well, which we do, then you, yeah. you're on for a winner, really, aren't you? So next up, I've been asked this question quite a lot, and I'd love to get your thoughts. Nicolo Zaniolo, do we sign him in the summer? Now, a little bit like the Ollie Watkins chat that I've just had, I get I get drawn to players again that can come under immense amounts of criticism because I'm a positive Villa fan and I want to back them. I want to believe in them. If everybody else sort of washes their hands with someone, I'm going to that player and I'm backing him to, to prove the doubters wrong. But Zaniolo... It's took him a bit of time to get going. He's played in multiple positions this season. I'm starting to see an Unai Emery player in Zaniolo. And again, on Sunday, it made me think, you know, on that left-hand side, he played a real, real strong game against Arsenal. He scored some big goals for Villa, two Premier League goals, Sheffield United and West Ham. And I've still got a little inkling that he's going to get another big goal this season. So, thoughts, Justin, on Zaniolo. Do we sign him or not? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a difficult one, right? And here's my thinking. It's cost. Obviously, it's a big factor going into the summer. You know, we've got this... Who knows what we've got hanging over us as far as ins and outs go with money side of things. And I think he has added value to the side. I think, you know, I said to someone yesterday, actually, that um, I think the two loan signings I'm going to miss. I think Longley and Zaniolo have done incredibly well. Loan 
uh, sort of being a lone player at a club where you more or less know you're going to have a season because you're covering, well, they were covering from Mings and Buendir, essentially. They were both brought in on the back of those two season-ending injuries. You're sort of on the hiding to nothing, aren't you? Because, you know, they're not. it's not your club. It's not a permanent deal. Are you looking for a permanent deal? Does he want to go somewhere else? I don't know. But I think he's had ups and downs. I think when he first came, I looked at his, his, his sort of pedigree and I thought, yeah, there's a player there. I think there's something we can really work with. And, and then he had a bit of a spell where people were on his back. and oh, he's, he's, he's idle, he's lazy, he falls down a lot. He doesn't add anything to the team. He's going missing. But I think recently, and I think the goal he scored, was it away against West Ham when he, he got that, that equaliser? I think that's given him a boost of confidence. I think the manager's played him quite a lot recently. And, and to start him on Sunday was was a big big vote of confidence. You know, I didn't have him in my starting eleven. I thought we'd go a different way. So that's, that shows that the manager's starting to have this belief in him. And I think he repaid that on Sunday. I really do. I think he, he, you know, he was a little bit in and out in the first half. But I think his role in the first half was very different. You know, a bit like the whole team, you know, we had to stay in the game. We had to ride out a storm to an extent. And I think he did well. He's got that profile. He can hold the ball up. He can, he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a Duran, you know, they're, they're, you know, the pair of them are like, you know, nutcases when they come on. They? Uh, and, but I do think he, yeah, he has got quality. I don't think there's any question he's got quality. And I think we saw that in the second half tremendously with, with the way he was carrying the ball and running and, you know, causing havoc. Do we sign him? I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm going to, sit on the fence with splinters, I'm afraid. The one thing that could make us sign him is, is if possibly someone like Jacob Ramsey was to be, if we had to sacrifice somebody, I know there's people saying maybe it could be Ramsey because of his youth team coming through. So if we've got a really, really decent amount of money for Ramsey and Buendia's back in the squad next season, then yeah, if, if we could get a deal done for the right amount, ultimately, Luke, if if we sign him, it's because the manager wants him. If the manager wants him, then that's good enough for me. I don't care what anyone else thinks about him. If Uno and we thinks he, there's a player there and he can work with him and he can improve him, as he's done with everyone, then I will happily go along with Uno Emery. Who am I to question him? Exactly. And another player that came in in January that Uno wanted and raised eyebrows, maybe, of football fans was Morgan Rogers to Aston Villa. And he's getting, he's getting for me, he's getting better and better every time I look at him. And again, he's played in different roles. He's been on the left against Arsenal. He was up top with Ollie Watkins. And I thought he, I thought he looked really good in that role as well. So uh, what are your thoughts on Rodgers? Because again, he, he's like, he's like impressing every time I see him. And I, I just think, if this is the early signs of, of what Uno is done with Rodgers, then there's some big games coming from Rodgers coming up. Yeah, I've got to hold my hands up with Morgan Rodgers, and I've got to be very honest. When I saw his first few cameos with Villa, I think I was at Luton when he came on, I did question a little bit whether his levels could get up to Premier League. I, I genuinely did. You know, I think championship-wise, he's a very good player, and I think he was good in that division. But to be asked to step up into the Premier League is a huge task, isn't it? It's a, it, it is a massive step up and he hasn't played there regularly. I know he's, he's, he's came through Man City's academy, so that's not a bad grounding for a footballer. And then, you know, we obviously identified him as somebody, again, that the manager liked and that can work with and feels he can get the most out of and improve. And his age profile is great. Again, he's a big lad. He carries the ball really well. So, and I, I, as I say, I, I will. I, I, I didn't say I didn't think he could make it. I was just questioning whether he could. His, his, the arc of his career would be quick enough to allow him to settle into the team because of our because of where we are and where we want to be, Champions League and top of the Premier League. I was thinking, is he going to get enough minutes to prove his worth to this team? And I think because of the injuries we've had and because of the way the season's gone, he's had this extended run in the team and it has done him the absolute world of good and he has used it. You can't fault him for the way he's, he's, he's gone in the last few games. And I definitely, definitely now think there's a real player there, a, 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 you know, a real player there. And I think he can play multiple positions. Again, the manager likes him and trusts him. And I think he's starting to believe now that he's not a championship player, that he is a Premier League player. And at his age, the kind of performance he's putting in recently, get him a full pre-season at Villa, and I think we could have a real gem in our hands. 
Me too. Absolutely love it. So, Lille v Aston Villa then. Tough game. Tough game. But we've just seen what we can do away from home, which is absolutely incredible. And I'm feeling more confident than I was when I walked out of Villa Park and done that fan cam. I will definitely admit that. Uh, but we didn't really go too much into detail of the Lille game. We did the fan cams and we went straight to the Arsenal preview. So we didn't really have a good look at it. But we'll fly through a few things now. Justin, how, how are you feeling then as a fan? And I'll put some of the graphics on the screen and we'll have a look at like the momentum bar and, and stuff like that. And then we'll, we'll get into it. But how are you feeling ahead of the game? Um, when I saw them play last week, I knew they were good, but it worried me how good they were and how much possession they had, their really good use of the ball. And the best compliment I can give them after watching them is they, they're like the French version of us. They set up very similar to us. They've got a very similar side to us. They've got players in a very similar position to what we have. You know, Jonathan David, Ollie Watkins, you know, um, the two holding players are very comfortable on the ball. They don't waste possession very much. They look after the ball very well. You know, they don't panic. They play out from the back. It's a very similar set up to us and they came to us and I think I picked up on it on the preview that they went to PSG and it worried me. I looked at the stats when they went to PSG and they had a lot of possession and they created a lot of chances and that fed into what I saw on the pitch and you know so when my eyes were telling me exactly what I was worried about. So I was incredibly pleased when we were tuning up but that goal has taken did take the edge off it, obviously, because you're thinking, OK, we've only got a one-goal lead now, and these are a very, very good side. What I will say is we needed that performance on Sunday against Arsenal because what it's done now is it's, it's re-energised not only the fan base, but I think the team going into that game. And there was a lot of talk with the French FA allowing them the weekend off to give them the best possible chance to, to progress in this tournament. I'd argue now that that possibly could backfire on them because we have gone to Arsenal and won and it's given us the boost now to go to another difficult away game and put in another good performance. So momentum in football and football is playing regularly is better than training. You know, I, I never played anything like this level, but the, towards the end of a season when you had a back a backlog of games, there was nothing better than playing week in the midweek and on a Sunday, you know, you just play, 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 play and Yes, we are short on numbers, but I just think we're going to go full ball now every single game. You know, I don't see anybody being rested. I think there'll be rotation, yes, with the, like, Bailey and Diaby and, and the two left-backs and blah, blah, blah. But we go full ball in every game. And that win on the weekend is huge going into this game. And I think it's potentially given us maybe the edge now, especially with that extra goal advantage. You know, that one goal advantage, while it didn't look enough after the game, could be absolutely critical now. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at the game on Sunday and think we've five Premier League games to go plus this game. So, so far, we've got six to go. That's not a lot of games left. And if we've put in that monster performance against Arsenal and, and we've, we've re-shown everybody what we can do, and we've shown yeah. everybody what we are capable of again. Because there was that whole, yeah, but in December, this is what we were doing and we've stuttered and we've gone and blah, blah, blah. But I always thought we could potentially go on a bit of a run again. Like, I've then, always yeah. said that Manchester City will go on a run this season mm -hmm. and they will go on this run now until the end of the season. And I don't see them losing a game. So we have put in this big marker now. And like you say... Five Premier League games, including this cup game, so six. That's not a lot of games. Like you cannot be tired in the next six games. You, the, you'll just, we'll just go for it now. And mm. I see this game being very difficult for Lille. And I think you don't want to go into any game with a team having a one-goal advantage. That that you don't want to do that, do you? Because it, it's a, if we score, it's, it's we're two 0 up basically, 
And for me, the toll is probably probably done and dusted. So, and we know that we can be a real difficult team to play against. So, it, the onus is on Lille to come out and attack us. And I think that will leave them really, really vulnerable because I think Uno will know that that's what they're going to do. You know, they can't sit back. They can't like look to try and counter us because if you give us the ball, then look what happened against Arsenal. And then if you come at us, we'll just go direct or we'll go straight through you. So I think think they're in a bit of a sticky situation. Yeah, I think one of the statistics that worried me after we after we came away from the game last last Thursday was that they'd only lost at home twice. I think in you know, a really long time. I was thinking, oh god, it's going to be a really hard place to go. But Arsenal had only lost at home once all season. I think mm-hmm. once, and we went and they hadn't lost this this year, this calendar year. They hadn't lost. So you know, we're a bloody good team, and and now we've hopefully found that boost from that win again and and you know and, and maybe that's the game that's going to give us this rekindle our early season form where we were absolutely sensational then I think yeah I, I think we go into it and we play it like it's a nil nil and I think that's how he does it I think we go over there positive we play it like it's the first leg that if we could obviously be t- you know the the clean sheet at the Emirates is huge as well and that's big momentum that's good for the defense to come off the back of the clean sheet I think we go there and play it like it's a nil and then away from home. We we look after the ball. We yes, we try and score. We're not going to sit back. I don't see us doing what we did at Ajax because we had the second leg as a full back plan in case anything did go wrong. And we can't afford to do that in this game because this is the final, obviously the second leg. So I don't see us being as 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 defensively minded and sitting back as much as we did against Ajax. But I definitely see us being KG, but ball retention and keeping hold of it and you know, trying to push forward and get that goal. Because like you said, if we get that first goal, it's going to be incredibly difficult then for them to come back because they have got to open up them and come at us. And yes, they're capable. They've got some very good players, as we saw last week. But it would then give us the chance to hit them on the break and get a maybe, you know, an extra a second on the night, which does it, doesn't it? But I feel it's going to be cagey to start with, with us having an eye on, getting forward and making sure that, you know, we are proactive. Because if you get into this mindset of just sitting back, sitting back, sitting back in defence versus attack, you're on a hiding to nothing. I don't want to see that. I want to see us doing what we did against Arsenal. When we had the ball, we slowed the game right down and we frustrated them. And as we know with Lille, watched them last week, they're very similar to an Arsenal side that like the ball, they like possession. So when we've got it, we're just slowing it right down and taking the sting out of the game. That's just going to frustrate them. And the more we can frustrate them, the more we can keep the crowd quiet, the better it's going to be for us. You know, half time, nil nil, I'd be over the moon. Absolutely over. That's perfect for us because that takes them in at half time. The manager goes, to them, Right, you've only got 45 minutes left, lads. We've got to change the, the way we're going here. And that could play into our hands as well. So it's going to be absolutely fascinating. And I can't wait. The massive thing as well for me is. I've got visions now. I'm, I'm like thinking ahead to the game, and I've, I can just see Emmy Martinez with the ball trapped at his foot, and the crowd getting a bit like, oh, like getting out. They don't like, like him either, do they? They and, don't like and, him either. And, and, and you know <laughs> what? He's just going to be chilling on the ball, and and now I've got this. And I, I, I knew we were great playing out from the back anyway. Like I, I absolutely love it. I loved it from day one. I was a big advocate from it from day one, and. If you can do that and play that well against Arsenal, you can you can play out from the back against anybody because they press full press wingers, striker, the eights, the sixes. If you can do that against them, then you can do it against anyone. And then I, I remember you saying something three games ago, Justin, about us not keeping the same back four or back five for a, 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 how many games? Ten you games. Can't well, we've Ten. now kept the same back three in the next in the last three games. So that's telling that we kept a clean sheet at Arsenal and we're starting to look a bit more it, we just look better against Arsenal. So like having that continuous back five is really important as well. So that's something that I wanted to pick up and, on. And as well, I think the squad's getting deeper again as well. I think we saw that on the bench at the weekend, you know, Cash was back. 
Long Lair was back in the squad. Obviously, Douglas Lewis was missing, but he's going to be back in for the for this game, isn't he? I think you know he's only suspended for the next league game. So that squad's looking very, very deep, and the substitutions once again, as we've said all season, are going to play a huge role in this game. You know, whoever comes off the bench out of the Derby and Bailey, you know, Louise, you would think would play. That means somebody has to be left out. You know, it's, you know, probably Zaniolo, blah blah blah. But he's going to have a big impact to play coming off the bench. You know, if we if we're leading with ten to go with one up, then the likes of Longley coming off the bench and, and, and going back to a back five, a back six, a back seven, whatever it takes to keep that ball out for the last few minutes, we will do it. But we have got the personnel, you know, the players are coming back and they're starting yeah. to do it for them again. We'll we will never have a better chance of getting to a European semi final, of which we've only done once in our history. You know, four quarter finals we've reached. And we've only got through to one, but we went on to win it. That's the obvious one. We know which one it was. But huge, huge opportunity to get through to a semi-final. Something that many, many fans have never seen in their lifetime. Yeah, you wait next season when Real Madrid, Barca, Bayern are coming. We're knocking it round for fun at Villa Park. I can't wait for it. Right, so score prediction then, Justin. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the, I'm feeling the win. You know, I'm really feeling the win. So I'm gonna go with a two nil Villa win. What are you going with? I'm going with the same as the first leg. I think we'll win two one. I think we'll score. They might push and get an equaliser, but I think they'll be pushing for another goal and then we'll hit him on the break, finish it off. Lovely stuff. Right, cheers everyone for watching. The important, the important news is that you can all watch this game with me. Now, I've done watch-alongs before. I've done them for the whole of the preseason games, and they went down really, really well. And I do them for the internationals, England, etc. But I've never done them for a competitive Aston Villa game. So we are going to be doing a watch-along on Thursday. For the whole game, come and join us, watch it with me. I'll be the commentary, etc., and we can just enjoy the game together. Um, I just want to say cheers to everybody for watching all of our content recently. Absolutely unbelievable. You know, you you commenting and everything like that. The support is really, really good. So it's just great to have you guys all enjoying this season with us. TikToks going off. If you don't follow us on TikTok, make sure you do. And then finally, Sofa Score. If you've got this far in the episode and you haven't already downloaded it, then make sure you download it. You can scan the code that's on the screen now, or you can click the link that's in the description to this video, download it for free, and it just helps this channel out massively. So cheers, everyone, for watching. Up the villa. <laughs>